Hello everyone and welcome to the ESL Go For on Project Cars 2. This is number 3 and we're at Watkins Glen, a track I do kind of actually like. So I only managed to get an hour and a half's practice in just before this. I've been on GT Sport quite a lot recently, uh, trying to get my license up, uh, sorry my driver rating up, sorry. Uh, and also competing in the Nations Cup and things like that. And I take part in the Nations Cup just after this, so you've already seen that video at Blue Moon Speedway. Um, so literally straight after this, which is running late straight onto that but let's talk about project cars 2 and the ESL go for and as you can see this is the qualifier and I'm in second fortunately to qualify this week uh, from the qualifiers uh, but eat my Fanatec uh, out qualified me and he's just kept that lead going he's pushed really hard actually uh, I put in some good lap times as well and that's actually Weilinger back all the way back from multi-class season one on the PS4 that's Weilinger and uh, fair play to him to get in that win so obviously not an easy qualifier and you can see the lap times there, so he gets a 42.8, not bad in the race at all. I get a 43.0, I'm just building it up there. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking, excellent, okay. Uh, we've got some good competition. So this is the semi-final. I thought I'd show you this lap, because this is my fastest, potentially would have been my fastest lap um, of the entire final, semi-final, etc. And you'll see why in a second. So you can already see I'm um, about a tenth up. Tenth up, if you look top left, you can see Tommy Kilos is uh, from BAM, he's in first position I'm in second only a tenth behind so now I'm approaching two temps already I'm, I'm on a cracking first sector uh, and you'll see why in a little while uh, why is that so that's two temps up on my fastest which is a 0 0.409 so at the moment I'm on for a very low 0.2 if not potentially a 0 0.1 here uh, and as you can see two and a half temps up just dropping down back down to two temps so it's around that two temps marker now and we're still pushing like crazy uh, and you can see how fast we're pushing we're not in the yellow Ferrari uh, basically the lobby uh, put the AI in so at Troll Vision had to restart the lobby um, it did after then I forgot to choose delivery because it sort of resets itself so yeah so you can see we're two and a half temps up just coming to this corner we're just running a little bit wide there you can see our time shoots up that we're ahead just because we went in there a bit too quickly so we lose a temp but we're still up Look, one five, one six, one four. We're still up. We're still on track to beat Tommy Kilos. And my last sector is the worst sector. So you know, loads of time in here as we come through this right hand, that very tricky right hander, uh, and then we head up to this left one. This is a really tricky corner because you, it, you know, the apex tightens. And look at that tire wall there. But I just get a bit sideways. I catch it and just hit the barrier. And I was two temps up just before I hit that barrier. So then I've lost two temps. So I come into here. I've sort of lost my rhythm a little bit in this last sector now. So I lose a bit more time. But it's just right. I'm just missing it again. As I'm missing my rhythm a little bit. So I've gone in there. Just turned a bit too late. And as we head towards the start finish line. We don't improve. We get another point four. But uh, as you can see there. Isaac just steals it at the end. That's on the timer countdown. Uh, but just look here at the lap times, I kept this on for a bit longer, so you can see there my first sector at 0.8 compared to the 0.6, we were two temps up in the first sector, and my last sector at 0.7, there's a possibility there that I was on for a 42.1, 42.0, um, you never know what can happen, could it have been a 4.19, who knows, but congratulations to Isaac getting the pole position, Tommy Killers in second, and as you saw by the names in this, this is like a final with the amount of people in here, so Eat My Fanatec who beat me in the qualifier, started in fourth, we've got Jesus Cecilia in fifth, Jardia in the uh, sixth, who's the world record holder here at the moment, um, so you know, loads and loads of quick guys in here, Matty's in here as well, so this was like a final for us to be honest, I was, I was thinking to myself, if I don't make this, at least I get a bit more practice at the Nations Cup. But I did a good qualifying. I'd say I've not had a lot of practice at this. Did a good qualifying. You can see Isaac, Tommy Kilos having a bit of a battle there. I pulled a bit of a gap to eat my Fanatec already. My aim here is get top six. That's all I want. Top six. Nice and easy. Let's get to that final. The final's where it counts. It doesn't count in the semi final. You can push all you want. You can see I get a bit of understeer there from the dirty air. But, you know, the semi final doesn't count for much. You just get a final, a spot in the final. You know, if there's prizes here, yes, I would push harder and go for it and get involved with Isaac and Tommy Kilos. Uh, and trying to get that win. Yes, mentally you could get a bit of a, a, an, up, an up on uh, these guys, but are you really are you really going to risk all of that just to get that tiny bit of a up on them, which doesn't really have a, an impact anyway? Because you just come back fighting stronger and harder. No, you're not. So I advance all the way to lap eight because it's a pretty quiet race. Jordi has managed to make some positions up, but coming through here, I have a bit of a Tokyo drift moment. I managed to catch it. And Jordi has been actually catching me the entire race really because I've just been casually going about it really I've not been pushing that hard uh, except I fast slap a 429 so faster than the qualifier you'll see the guys up ahead were going a little bit quicker uh, I think Isaac does a 427 and Tommy Kittle to 428 could be the other way around um, and I think Jordi is in that region as well so you know we're all on reasonable pace so I'm just now 
wanting to get to the finish. Uh, we're miles ahead of fifth place, so I do even think at this point, you know, I'm tempted to give Jardy the position if he pushes me for an overtake, because I don't really care. I just want top six. You know, you got to play smart in these uh, races. You're aiming for the final goal. It doesn't matter where you come in these races. It's qualifying that matters. So, you know, if you come sixth, so Gobby's in sixth at the moment, that's fine. He's done it. He's done what he needed to do to get to the final. But as we come through these last few corners now, we're just going to come through nice and easy. See, we're not pushing. We're not all the way over that curb. We're not pushing too hard. Letting off. Just rolling through the corner. And we head towards the uh, start finish line there. So you see Jardier is quite happy with the flashing lights. I give him a bit of a wiggle. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the end of that race. You can see Isaac, oh, 42.4 there, sorry. So Isaac did put in a pretty good lap. 42.7 there from Tommy Kilos. Uh, Jardier, 42.8. And this is the final. And look at that for a difference. Isaac, Tommy Kilos, 6th and 7th. I'm in 4th, Storm's in 3rd. Uh, again, my lap times, my middle set to 33.0. Where's my 32, low 32 eights? Uh, really annoyed with that because uh, I could have been up there again. Mr. Kabul, his first uh, pole position I've seen in the final. So, uh, yeah, let's see what we can do here. So, this is the final. Uh, of course, we're going to have the TV camera whiz itself in in a second. Uh, and our aim here is now to win. You know, we're not here to lose now, we're here to win. Um, so we've got to push for these positions. Storm gets an excellent start, so you know he keeps his position. Uh, I get an alright start. Probably need to improve these starts. Um, as I say, I'm racing two games at the moment, so it's hard to keep up to like optimum pace in both. I'm managing it so far, as you see. I'm in fourth. So this is where I do need to start pushing. So I've had a good start behind. There's a bit of battling. Jardier, Isaac in there. Uh, I think Popsu or Tommy Kilos is behind uh, them as well. Uh, but this Ferrari and uh, just braking in general in this game, I absolutely hate it at the moment. Uh, the braking in, um, in this game is really, I'm not enjoying it at all, um, just because of that. Because uh, every time you go into a braking zone and you brake, you're not 100% sure what the car will do. Sometimes it'll lock up, sometimes it won't. Sometimes the rear will come out, sometimes it won't. So you're having to you know, play with the brakes all the time, it's not enjoyable. Not enjoyable in the slightest. I don't know if it's to do with tyre temps, because we're on hard tyres and the tyre temps. As you see, Storm making a move on there on Eat My Fanatec. Now, just on that move, I wasn't a particular fan of it. You'll see Eat My Fanatec flashing his lights as well. I'm not sure he was a fan of it. Basically, the last second, Storm goes for the inside. Pretty big dive bomb. You can see that on the TV camera, Fanatec um, flashing his lights. It's a pretty big dive bomb with potential consequences, with damage. Um, it's not very nice there. Uh, as much as you've got to make moves on this uh, competition to win, it's always better to race fair than to, you know, push competitors out of the way and things like that. Even so, uh, you know, it wasn't my battle, so um, that's all I'm going to say on that one. But back to what I was saying, with the braking, it's just horrible. So coming down to this first corner, this is a perfect example. Uh, now, obviously, this has a bit of camber, so you can use the inside. You don't want to touch the curb too much if it was that throw you off. Uh, you go too wide, you get a penalty. Uh, so coming into here. And you can see I just let off because I don't want to break. Uh, that's the crazy thing. So you can see Fanatec there made a mistake. So I'm going to be right up close here. I let off here because I don't want to be right up his bumper going into his left because I can't see it otherwise. Um, basically, you get the closer you get, obviously, the less you see at the track. Um, so then I'm thinking, should I take him at the chicane? Should I not? And I'm not going to do it because I don't want to. So I flash him over. You just see that slight lift because it'll slow us both down. Jody, I'll be right in our trumpets. And uh, we don't want that. So, and I'd get the understeer again. It's so annoying that stuff. <laughs> oh, dirty air and understeer in these cars, man, is uh, annoying. It's like worse than the LMP2s on the PlayStation 4 in P Cars 1. That was dreadful, but this feels just as dreadful in that she came. So, Fanatec gets a bit of a gap there, uh, and we continue on. And uh, this next corner, I do love this next corner because it's like, it's a really weird because it's sort of, it's got nice camber. So, you can just full throttle it like halfway through the corner and make it round fairly easy, you've got all that little exit there, you know, tarmac cut out a little bit, really nice. This corner coming up, horrible, horrible corner, the braking, watch my braking now, it's, uh, I'm having to judge the braking a lot of the shows, I was full, then off, then half, then off, then quarter, then off, I'm just trying to make sure the car doesn't spin, absolutely horrible, but as you see on the TV camera, there's uh, five of us in this battle at the moment, so, uh, and the leaders are not that far up ahead, we've got 12 laps, well, 10 laps now to do it in, so, so we're still in with a shot. I know the pace is there. Uh, I'm going to go all the way back to Pop 2, I think. So we've got Pop 2, Isaac, Jardier, myself, Eat My Fanatec, and then uh, Storm and Mr. Kabul up ahead. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to push like crazy. I need to get close to Fanatec and I need to make this move. Uh, so I get a good first corner there, really good first corner. Uh, I'm going to get the slipstream going. As I say, we've got 10 laps, 9 laps to uh, get this move done and really make uh, strides towards Storm and Mr. Cabal because when they start fighting, they're going to slow each other up quite quickly. Uh, and that's where we've got to be ready to make our move. So in my fantastic, just trying to break the slipstream slightly because um, he knows I'm in there. So you want to cut that as much as you can. Try and uh, get the weight transfer so it's nice through there. As you saw that time, much better. Dirty air didn't affect me as much because I had a bit of clean air on one side of the car. Um, so I made it through quite nicely and the train looks so good on the TV camera. Look at that So uh, as well just while we're racing and you're watching this race at the moment uh, It is highlights, but this bit is so intense. It's uh, it's awesome to watch um, You've seen a lot of races at the moment. So you've seen GT Sport races. We've got a, some time trial laps coming in. We've got the uh, the ESL Go Force and stuff. I've not really done a lot of guides lately So I want to try and do a track guide in Project Cars 2 a week and I want to try and do some GT Sport guides as well to try and help you out. Uh, perhaps even look at how you can improve as a driver, irrespective of sim. Uh, and as you see on the TV camera, Isaac and Pop 2 have had a bit of a uh, smash up there. So we're down to three people in this battle for third at the moment. So uh, Jodir has lost all the pressure behind him. I think what happened there is that Isaac broke, Jodir broke. Uh, and Pop 2 just outbroke himself a little bit, hit, hit Isaac. And they both just went straight to the barrier at that point. Uh, but yeah, as I say, I want to try and get a track guide out for Project Cars 2, try and get a guide out for GT Sport. Uh, and I know a few of you have been asking, how do you get quicker at games? You know, how do you, how are you so fast? Or, you know, how do you get this quick? How do you do this? How do you do that? Because sometimes somebody will watch me, like, trail break into a corner and work out and wonder why my car has done what it's done. Um, so I'll, I'll go into that again. I did do that Road to GT Academy ages and ages ago in 2013, which explained a lot of this stuff. But I'll revisit it because uh, we've got new games. Obviously, the physics have changed slightly. While yes, we're still applying real-world driving techniques. Obviously, the way you apply them it will slightly be slightly different on a per-game basis, but the idea is still there. So as you can see, we're getting quite close to Fanatec now. I am pushing as hard as I can to get as close as I can to this guy because I really uh, want to uh, get the move done. I think he might have a bit of damage as well from when Storm hit him. Might have one or two damage. Remember at Red Bull Ring, that really affected me. Uh, that could be the case here because we know he's quick. Uh, and we've only done a 43-3 at the moment uh, in this race. But Watkins Glen, a really hard track to make moves. Uh, but we keep trying. So I keep showing my... Uh, uh, like myself pointing out a little bit just to you know it, um, while it doesn't scare a driver it makes them a bit more edgy because they're wondering when is it going to happen now if you keep doing it they'll get used to you doing it and suddenly if you want to make a move you can make a move quite quickly um, but you know it just keeps them looking behind they might then miss their braking spot slightly it's all just little movements like that which can uh, can always help and uh, we're pushing on, so now it's coming up to the start of lap number five. We're really going to have to start making moves. We're three seconds behind Storm now, uh, Mr. Cabal, and Storm's right close to him as well. As you can see there, oh, look how close they are. So as coming into this corner, I get an absolute brilliant run out of here. Absolutely brilliant. So this is where I'm going to push like hell. Now, the main place I think uh, to overtake on Watkins Glen is the long left or the long right. You can do it on either of those places quite well. Um, so I want to get as close as I can through the first right after the chicane to the long left because that's where I want to make my move so as you can see Fanatec realizes this so I'm getting right in the slipstream gonna get close gonna get close I just lose the rear end full Tokyo drift go to catch it it snaps the other way smash so what I'm trying to do here is just get out of the way now I could reset my car here uh, probably should have maybe uh, but I just wanted to get out of the track I can see people coming so I'm just being kind here you know being the fair racer um, that you guys know I am, you know, I'm not going to stay in the middle of the track uh, and I'm going to whack it in reverse uh, and then we'll continue again. So I caused myself a double the amount of damage just for getting out of the way. It's pretty kind of me, isn't it, really? So uh, we leave the pits and look at the map on the left. We've got a white dot waiting for us outside. And of course, it's Isaac from earlier on. So Isaac, really clean, fair racer. You've seen, and I've banged on about it forever, the Hockenheim race where we were side by side for half a lap uh, on the final lap fighting for a podium position. Um, and Isaac's obviously had an accident. So rather than race round on his own, he decided to wait up. So really fair play to Isaac. Uh, we had a big battle. Uh, I span again. He then let me in front. So he 
could try and, you know, obviously build up his confidence in the dirty air, I imagine, see where he can overtake, etc. Uh, and as you can see, he's quite close here. Uh, a bit closer than I was to Fanatec coming up here. So is Isaac going to try the unthinkable uh, and try and do a move at the chicane? So, but we'll find out. So at this point, I'm just moving to the left. I'm not expecting Isaac to go for it, you know. Uh, we are racing foot. So I see he goes to the right. So I'm thinking, oh, is he pressuring me? He actually goes for it. And look at this. We're side by side through the chicane. That's how you do it. That's how you race clean and fair. Uh, so awesome move there, Isaac. See, I'm smiling. Uh, you saw my face go like proper concentration uh, during the chicane. Smiling again. It's a good move. Isaac's really quick here as well. Uh, so it's a shame he's down uh, in 11th. And I'm down in 12th. Um, fortunately, it doesn't affect my driver rating too much. You can see Isaac's pulled a bit more of a gap there. Um, it's up near 8 temps now. Basically, I find when you've locked your tyres or span, so I spanned twice at this point and the pit stop didn't change them. Um, yeah, your tyres are pretty much gone and you can't can't do half as much speed. Uh, you can see Pop 2's apologised to Isaac there in the chat as well, so obviously it was uh, just a mistake. Uh, but fair play to Isaac for waiting up. And a big shout out to Isaac again. Um, for that race, but uh, yeah, ESL go for number three, not gone right. So ESL go for one final, we span. ESL go for <laughs> two final, we span. ESL go for number three final, we spin. So you can tell I'm not really liking, or oh, I'll be honest, I'm not really enjoying the cars at the moment. They need to change this braking, it's absolutely horrible. Even with ABS on, you shouldn't be locking as much as we are. Uh, but yeah, you see I flashed my lights there. I enjoyed the battle with Isaac, it's a fair play. Uh, congratulations to uh, Storm, who won that one. He did overtake Mr. Kabul in the end. Uh, but thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you next time.